Hey guys, Ivan here with GuitarMessenger.com. We're at NAMM 2014. We are here at Ivanus with Tosin Abasi. How's it going, man? Going good. So, you got a brand new guitar coming out this year. Tell us a little bit about the premise of this one. This is the TAM-10. Um, basically, this guitar was born out of a custom shop Ibanez that I designed a few years ago. And uh, there was a lot of interest in that guitar, which kind of spawned the whole TM-100, right? Mm -hmm. But that looked dramatically different than this guitar, so um, they wanted to kind of issue something similar to that guitar, and that's what this is. It's similar and different in a lot of ways. Like, it has a maple neck as opposed to the Wenge Babinga neck, and it's a basswood body like the TM-100. Obviously, it's got a white finish. It's got a Gibraltar fixed bridge, which is going to be nice for guys who prefer that feel. It doesn't have, like, the Floyd profile. It's a, it's a bit lower. Right, right. Um, what I think is best about it is the fact that it still has my pickup configuration, the ionizers. Um, it has the same like control layout, so you can split the sink the humbuckers, or you can include this single coil in these settings if you're in this uh, you know parallel settings. How often do you use all the configurations? Are you using utilizing all of them, or are there a couple go to settings that you usually default to? I mean, anything rhythm and lead is going to be full bridge or full neck, but okay. a lot of the like sort of more glassy cleans, I default to this. Uh, the second to last setting, which is this outer coil and the, in, the inner single coil here. It really gets like a thick single coil sort of sound with like a really sparkly high end. I use that for slapping too, slapping and tapping because the attack is pronounced. It's kind of scooped in that, that sort of like out of phase sort of way, but it doesn't, it doesn't lose output the same way. I kind of really like this setting and I think that's really what makes this guitar sound unique to all the other eight strings that I've tried. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like my signature sound, you know. So, Animals Leader's third album is ready. It's ready. It's done. So, how does the third one differentiate itself, differentiate itself from the first two sonically? Well, I guess the differences would be um, we recorded Matt Garska for the first time. So, right. his playing, his phrasing, as well as his actual drum kit. You know, we actually like went and tracked real drums for the first time. And sonically, I was kind of like hesitant because it's a really involved process, you know? Yeah. It's, it's time, time, uh, time intensive as well as cost, but it was actually really worth it. We have a unique sounding, just really cool sounding recording because of it. And we worked with Nolly from Periphery on the production, so I think the mix sounds super organic, but really, really big, mm -hmm. very dynamic as well. So that's really cool. And then, um, I guess what's similar is that we went back to working with Misha Mansoor of Periphery. He produced um, around six or seven songs with me. Okay. Um, and this is par parallel to the way I did the first Animals as Leaders album where I had a bunch of sketches, loose ideas, and I needed someone to help me just glue it all together. And Misha has been a friend for a long time. I really respect his work, and I think he's an excellent producer. We share a lot of the same musical sort of like ideas, you know? So it's a very seamless collaboration. So on Waitlist, you know, we worked as a band, and then on an on this this third one, I just really, I really wanted to work with Misha again to reclaim some of that original dynamic. Definitely. And then we also worked with Diego Farias, who plays guitar in a band called Volumes. And he uh, he's pretty young, but he's super talented, and honestly, like, it was refreshing to work with someone new. So that's kind of like different than any of the other two albums. What would you say he brought to the table that was different from the rest of it? If you've heard volumes, like they groove like super hard. That's like probably the primary like element of what they're doing. So some of the songs we worked on with him, I mean, they just have that just driving sort of moderate to slow tempo, heavy sort of groove, which was really cool. And his production actually is really cool. Like he helped with a lot of the electronic stuff. So um, yeah, the demos we did with him, we were really stoked with. All this was done, I mean, the demos I did with Misha were like January of last year. So this stuff has been like kind of just standing for a while, but it's cool that it's finally done. Yeah. That's what it. Was uh, Misha's production as hands-on as he usually is about it? You know, even to the point of playing some of the parts? I feel like Misha took more of like a, a balanced role. Like the first Animals as Leaders, he like played guitar parts and yeah. he'd be like, dude, let me see the guitar. And he would like come yeah. up with entire riffs. And that was cool because there was no definition on what he was. He was just a guy who made music and I was a guitarist. Right. I think on this current one, he, it was more of a pro producer's role where he was hands-on, but not necessarily like hands-on the guitar per se, 
but he really helped to just like define the the sequences of the songs. He, you know, he sketched out all the drums, the bass lines, you know, all the supplementary sort of uh, chords like with pads and stuff like that, strings. I mean, yeah, he's super talented. So he filled all the spaces that weren't just me playing guitar. Mm. So, so yeah, I don't know if it was that different, honestly. Yeah. yeah. What's the uh, What's the name of the new album? It's called The Joy of Motion. What are you working on right now in, in terms of your own guitar playing and writing? Uh, I'm working on improvisation. Okay. Uh, and I'm listening to a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of other guitar players outside of my normal comfort zone. So this is a guy named Isaiah Sharkey. He plays like R&B, neo-soul, gospel stuff. But it's super high, highly stylized uh, style of playing. I'm just like obsessed with it lately. So. I've been just kind of working on like double stops and weird like sort of I don't want to I don't know anyway but that that's kind of yeah. yeah. right on awesome I'm looking very much looking forward to this new album and seeing what 2014 has in store for you so best of luck Thank looking you. forward to it guitarmaster.com Tosin Abasi we're at the Ibanez booth thanks for watching